Because they're very strict, you've noticed that. I know. I know. Okay, let's fly it, guys. We did this. Here is something to contemplate. This is from a, um, an Asian website that I found. Uh, notice 6 a.m. sunrise. Please notice 12 p.m. Computer searching. Okay. All right. There is the um, the tarot. Most of these graphs are mine. This is my graph, um, but I did uh, source much information from the Golden Dawn people, from uh, Paul Foster Case, and uh, I think this is harmonising very much with that school of the Golden Dawn. And they knew their tarot. The 22 cards correspond to the 12 signs and the 10 planetary bodies. Seven and three, always. The seven vowels and the three diphthongs. The 12 are the 12 consonants. And in Kabbalah, they teach that the 12 consonants and the seven vowels create everything. 12 is mind, seven is matter. Mind is over matter. And we are this creator that is doing this. <clears throat> is there a link to the 22 deacon stars, constellation? Ooh. The 22 deacons? Yeah. Why do you say 22? I thought they were 22, but it might be 44 or more. No, there's 30, 36, <laughs> okay. but 22, that's interesting, because in Glastonbury, when I was there, I showed... Uh, that there are, there's another zodiac on top of the 12, yeah. there's the 22, that, that, that take, instead of the 12 main signs, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, they grab Perseus from Aries, they grab um, Eridanus from Orion, so they grab two here, one here, and they grab the, every sign has three deaconal signs, you see, so and they make 22, and it's, it's beautiful. You'll see that on my Glastonbury Zodiac presentation I did two weeks ago. Check it out, it's, it's worth... Yes. Okay, please have a look at this. This is um, the sign of Libra. It's the sun setting, okay? Libra, in Arabic, Ibrahim. Lib El Ibrahim is the name of Abraham. Abraham is Ra, Ram, Abraham, Father Ram in the head. We're going to do this now. Now we're going to do the, we're going to do biochemistry now, mixed with astrotheology to show how our body is below of what is above, and we're going to learn how we can use our body to ascend. Inside, we ascend. If you're looking outside for ascension, waiting for a saviour to come vicariously to save you, this is not going to happen. It never has. It never will. We do the good work. <coughs> Alpha, Omega. Omega is the last letter of the alphabet. Just like the Tav, the Tav and the Omega. See, this is Omega and the cross of the Tav. In Greek, the last letter of the alphabet. In Hebrew, the last letter of the alphabet. It's where the sun gets crucified, in Libra. It's the tree Why of the knowledge of good and evil. Why is it so holy in Egypt? It's holy. Of course, it's all holy. This is the holy science. This is all holy. I mean, why is it in Egypt? Uh, why? Uh, yes, in Egypt is it so holy? Because this is called the Ank. Ank. Bank. Oh, who cleaned my board? Thank you, Johan. <laughs> He's like an angel. He's my angel brother. He's Scorpio. I have a brother Scorpio too. He looks just like me because I'm Aries. So Mars and Mars, the two rulers of planet. We're both <laughs> martial, you see. But I'm more aggressive than him and he's more soft. He does this, this stuff. <laughs> Ank is angle. We have ankle. Yeah? Angle. This this is an angle moving, yeah? Ankle. But but ank is anklish. English. Anglish. You see, they they always had the ankle in their hand because they are carpenters. 
builders building gospels, goat spells, tragedies. Everything is a tragedy, a tragedy, a gospel. Our lives are a gospel. We follow the ecliptic, we follow the sun. The Bible says God gave us Jesus as a model so we shall follow in his footsteps. And so that's showing that this is a sacred person. He, is, he knows about angles. Do we know our angles? In the Bible, in Job 40, 38, 32, it says, God is saying to Job, he says, Do you know how to tell forth the Maseroth? Maseroth means zodiac. Oh, interesting. Every word in the Bible is translated from Hebrew to English, but Maseroth, they leave it Hebrew. <laughs> Yeah, just so the sleeping church goes, go, oh, man, the right thing. God word. It's not the zodiac. That's from the devil. Yes, it's the zodiac. Do you know how to tell the zodiac? Do you know the signs when they're coming? Do you know how to tell them? If not, you're an idiot. That's God. Literal. Literary God. Not literal God. You see, they give us... <coughs> <laughs> in your presentation, you also said "ank" of a bank. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Yes. They got it from there. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. The "ank" is in many, many words. Yeah. Mm. It's. <coughs> Thank you. Thoth, thought. Always a thought. When you thank someone, it's from thinking. And from heart, from Thoth, the messenger. So you're thanking someone. There's many words. Uncle comes from angle. English, the word angel, it's angel. They're telling you that we know the angels. We know the angels. This is the holy religion. Now we have forgotten it. Now we go to church and we say, oh, it's from the devil. We go to school, to university, and it's a pseudoscience. It's a pseudoscience. Oh, we haven't tested it in the laboratory. In the meantime, <laughs> astrology is telling forth everything. It's the word of God. And the Bible says, For lack of the knowledge of my word, for not knowing me, my people will perish. Mm. People are perishing for not knowing their angles. They've forgotten their science. The science of light. <clears throat> These people remembered their science. See, these people, they ascended the Christ within. The Christ came here and went to the ram, Aries, Abraham, the father. And see, they carry the, the eagle's feathers. These feathers do not touch the ground. If they touch the ground, it will bring dishonor to the spirit. They must always wear this on their head. And then when the Christians came, they killed these ones by the hundreds. Anyone they saw, they killed them because these represent matriarchy. This is all matriarchal. All of it. Patriarchal religion comes from? Patriarchy basically amounts to psychopathy, pimpery, and pedophilia. <laughs> That's all you'll find in Rome. Or in any of these buffoon churches. Today we have some um, some Syrians here. How do you say father in Syria? Or uh, Middle East? How do you say? I know. I know in Baba. Baba of Bouye. Bouye. Anyone from Iraq? Anyway, in Babylon, Papa is Baba. Babylon. Okay. Let me do this correctly. Baba. In Italian. To say padre, you say papa. Papa. Everything patriarchal that is top, top down rule. You see, there's, you know, here and the top is the rulers. They are pimps. You know what a pimp is? Yes. He has all the prostitutes working for him. He does nothing. No sweat, no services. He just gets the pimps, he gets the prostitutes, they make $100, he puts $90 in his pocket, and she suffers. Mm -hmm. And these are the rulers of this world, are pimps. We live in a pimpocracy. 
Not democracy, not plutocracy, <laughs> not oligarchy. None of that. It's a pimpocracy. And they use agents in their papacy. You see? This is, this is the Pope. Pope means Baba, Father, Papa. It's Babylon the Great. You see? Egypt. Mazra Yaum Madunia. What does this mean? Any Arabics speaking people? In Egypt they say Mazra Yaum Madunia. Egypt is the mother of the world. Babylon is the father of the world. When Babylon was destroyed, they went to Pergamon in Turkey. From Pergamon they were destroyed, they went straight to Rome. The papacy is Babylonia, but Babylonia Mark II, because original Babylon was pure. Just like original Egypt, original Greece, original Rome, they were all pure. Everything was pure. And then it was corrupted when we descended into the gold, into the dark ages. This is the problem. We all forgot these signs. We're all guilty. <coughs> Here, all right. Let's let's go. Let's go back to this. I want to do another presentation here, folks. We're going to do um, the chrism and the ascension here now. Man is the measure of the universe. Remember, man is what? Man. The hand. We are the race of mankind because of the hand. With our hand we can... Man... man we can... maneuver. We can manage. We can manifest. How do we manifest this meeting? With our hands. Because we are human. And woman. And make money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> M O N. <clears throat> you yourself are even another little world and have within you the sun and the moon and the stars. This is Origen, one of the church fathers from the third century in Alexandria when syncretism was alive and well and prospering, and then the Romans came with Constantine and they came and they destroyed all the temples of science in the world and you can check, you can go on the internet and put down Christian destruction of ancient wisdom and you will see thousands of websites describing all the years since, since these criminals after, the, after these beautiful Alexandrian teachers were teaching Gnostic Christianity all around the world then came the Roman Empire of Constantine <coughs> and they went beheading and killing and shedding blood and destroying all of this science. No wonder here we are still scratching our heads trying to understand this science and remember it. And then 30, 50, 60 years after Constantine they burned the Alexandrian library, stole the books and syncretism was snuffed out in the 4th century. The workings of the human body are an analogy for the workings of the universe. Leonardo da Vinci, our beautiful brother. Nothi se afton, know thyself. Nosce te ipsum. Juvenal said, this precept came from heaven. Da coel. We didn't make it up. No one said, hmm. Know thyself and you will know all the gods and all the archetypes, and you will know who you really are. Not one of us said that. It comes from heaven. It comes from universal mind knowing. This is why in the inner temple they taught this. You will know all the gods if you know yourself. Today, we are going to spend the next hour and a half that we have knowing ourselves. You will know yourself. When you know yourself through this beautiful science of light, you will love yourself. When you love yourself, you will in turn love other people who are also you in another, in another experience. The division has caused us to think that there's separation here. There's no separation. It's all one. Syncretism. Holy science. It's all whole. It's all holistic. And there's no separation. 
And this is why we are deprived of love. And we are all seeking love. That's all we, we, that's all we need. Love. Love is life. Sat Chit Ananda. Consciousness, bliss, existence. Is the satisfaction of our hearts. We have those three things. None of this commerce. No properties and titles. Oh, I own a house. It's seat on the paper. Oh, I'm registered. I'm married. Why would? Does it matter if you've got a piece of paper that says you, that you're married? Does that matter? No. It matters to the controllers because the birth registration is the first trap of enslavement. The, the marriage, sorry. The second one is the birth certificate. But first is the marriage. This is why when you go to church... Oh, you have to be married to serve Jesus because they want that paper because their world is a paper fiction, papacy. Papacy. Remember Baba? Top-down rule. Matriarchy is bottom-up rule. We are the law. We make money. See, the Rothschilds are smart. They know that we make money, so they made more money than everybody else and we're all using their money. We have to stop using their money. Yeah. It's blood money. Bitcoin. This has got blood on it. This is disgusting. This is pimpocracy. We make the money. We make the law. We make all things. If we are not kings and priests, we are fools. <coughs> and, and someone will come and interlope. Someone will come and put themselves in between you and God. And tell you and teach you lies that you need something to save you. <coughs> Hence, knowing ourselves, we will be king and priest. And the Bible says, and they shall be kings and priests with Christ for a thousand years. As above, so below, the hermetic law of correspondence. These are the elements, the four elements, the four rivers of the Garden of Eden. Solid, everything that is solid. Earth, the hexahedron. Solidity. Carbon. That's the bottom, the hex. These four shapes, five shapes, are the only shapes that fit inside a sphere that touch at the corners. No other shapes do. These are the five platonic solid. Then there are 13 Archimedean solids. Five and 13 are Fibonacci numbers. <coughs> Water, icosahedron. Beautiful. Someone gave me a. Uh, someone in um, London last week gave me a beautiful quartz crystal. I want to show that with you. And um, it doesn't put, want to show itself. No, I'll put it in my <laughs> smallest pocket so I wouldn't lose it. Isn't that beautiful? Can the camera, can we see that? That's an, you see, that's quartz crystal. That's an, it has 20, 20 triangles of the, of the tetra. See? Yeah. Uh, so, icosahedron, liquid, all that is liquid. Atoms will be solid molecules, liquid <laughs> atom, atomic, gas particle, light photon. Temperature, motion, cohesion, solidity. That's it. That's all the universe needs to do to perform this beautiful dance. This beautiful sexual dance of dualism, duality, good and evil, male and female. And how nice it is when they come together and dance for a little bit, you know? Swirl around and mix their love. It's love. Air, octahedron, gas, motion. The universe, all is motion. Fire, the tetrahedron. Remember the tetragrammaton? Yod, he, va, he. Fire, Jehovah. Nitrogen, see that corresponds to the four... Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen makes up 97% of your body. It's always the four rivers. In biochemistry, the four rivers are your blood, your cerebrospinal system, your saliva, and urine. Four rivers. In, in alchemy, uh, sorry, in sacred geometry, it's the platonic solids. You see? They all, in every science, they all have their place. In biochemistry, it's, it's, it's here. Carbon. In physics, it's here. Solid, liquid, gas and light. Biochemistry is this. Astrotheology, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And the list goes on. 
there's always four rivers in the Garden of Eden. <coughs> Here are the elements, according to Walter Russell, different rates of vibration, and they all correspond to the seven colours of matter. And those are the elements that correspond. I won't mention them because there's too many. There are no elements. They don't exist. There are no particles. It's a wave universe. The secret of creation is the wave. The particle is an illusion. It's all waves. Waves. Spiral waves and lemniscates. Lemniscates. Lemniscate is this shape that they do. The figure eight. Everywhere. Everywhere there is this dance. The lemniscate. Here are the 48 constellations, the original constellations. Now, in the last 2,000 years, they've added 40, and we have 88. But originally, the skies are populated with 48 constellations, and they are all, every single one of them, in your body. Starting with Aries, the cerebrum. Taurus, the cerebellum, the low, the low mind. Gemini, the two lungs, the two twins, air. Cancer, the chest. Leo, the heart. Virgo, the belly. The two kidneys, the two scales, etc., etc. And this is the ecliptic of the sun. Remember the ecliptic? The sun is always on the ecliptic. If I can get a, a, a wet, slight, um, Johan, if I can have a slightly moist one of these, that will be handy, please. Sorry, brother, I'm making you do so much work. <laughs> he's, doing, he's doing somersaults, backflips, just a little bit, bro. Beautiful. <laughs> yes, but now I need a drive. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. Made him do that work for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody's doing something. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that's that's better. Wonderful. All right. So this this is the ecliptic. That's all it is. It's not a circle. The ecliptic is not a circle. Well, it's circular. But it's not a perfect circle. It's just it's just the sun, the sine wave showing itself here in two dimensions. The sun is always right ascending. You understand what right ascension is? <clears throat> when you look at the map of the earth, you see all these lines, yeah? 15 degrees. These are latitudinal lines, see? And then you have longitudinal nines, and the meridian is Greenwich in London. So that's the zero point. This is right ascension. Right ascension. Ra, the sun. And this is right ascension of meridian. Ram, Aries. So, in astronomy, which is one of the seven languages, you see, we have these lines here. As the sun goes this way along the ecliptic, he right ascends. So, when you go to Google Sky and you put um, six and a half hours right ascension, well, every... This is zero degrees right ascension. Here is two hours right ascension. Here is four hours right ascension. Here is six. Six and a half brings you into the sign of cancer. So if you put in Google Sky six and a half hours right ascension, you come to cancer. But if you want to know um, latitude, that's called declination. The sun does not decline, declinate. Only the planets do. So you see, the sun is always zero degrees declination. He's always right ascending, Ra, 
but it cannot go below or above the ecliptic like the other planets. Sometimes Mars is up there, sometimes Mars is negative declination, sometimes Venus is six degrees negative declination, sometimes she's four degrees positive declination, but very rarely are the planets zero degrees. But the Sun is always Ra, right ascending. And, this is, and in astrology, um, this is where the Ram <coughs> is. In theology, this is where Abraham is. Abraham has a wife called Sarah. In biochemistry, we have the cerebrum here. Ceres is Sarah. Brum is Abraham. Cerebrum, Sarah, Abram. In theology, you just have to cross your disciplines. And so, and so, that ecliptic, they are the 12 signs of the zodiac. In the north, above the ecliptic, we have extra zodiacal signs. In the south, we have extra zodiacal signs. Each sign has three. And so there are 36 outside of the ecliptic. 12 plus 36 is 48. The original numbers of the constellations in the sky, and every one of them corresponds with 48 organs in your body. Orion is the optic thalamus. Today we're going to learn about how we can go, how we can get to the middle of the head here in between the cerebrum and the cerebellum to Orion. Orion is a deacon of Taurus. And this is the head, and we have to get to the middle, to Orion, the optic thalamus, the eye that sees. Hence, they put the little bindi here. The Indians, you see? Or they put, the, the Jews put a phylactery here. Even in Japan, they put this thing on here. Because they want to activate this, this here. You see, they want to ap activate Orion in the optic thalamus. Next to Orion is a river called Eridanus. <laughs> Where's the camera? Eri Danus. That's one deacon of Orion, of Taurus. Eri Danus is Jordanus. The Jordan. That's why here is where we need to be baptized in this river. The Eri Danus is nothing but the ventricular system in your brain, which is like the, the, the waterways of Amsterdam it's the water waves of the brain. There are four ventricles filled with fluid. And we, as the oil of the cerebrum, there is a special oil called the wax, the bread, the bread of life, the manna from heaven. Heaven is head. Head. Heaved, heaved up. Heel is hell. Head, heaven, heel, hell. Hence, when the, when the oil, this beautiful sacred cerebrospinal oil, which produces our body, the cerebrospinal system, the first system in the body out of the 12 systems in the body that is fully developed. And the oil that comes from the claustrum little closet, little cloister, just below the cerebrum, descends and, and comes down to the sacrum. Here we have the sacrum bone, the sacral bone. We're going to look at this in a minute. And it's a pump. It's a bone, five fused bones, and it pumps. And it pumps the oil back up. When the oil returns, we have illumination. We have illumination. We have entered the higher mind. And we are baptized in the Jordan, which starts in... Orion, at the foot of Orion, is a star called R Regal, Rigel, and the river Eridanus goes all the way to the foot of Aquarius. From Orion, to Aqu from Orion in Taurus to Aquarius, and Aquarius is the water bearer, and, and there is the river joining the two. And so, this is where Jesus gets baptised when he is in the Eridanus, the Jordan, in, in, the, in the head, in the Garden of Eden. Remember, this is the head, 
heaven, here is hell. Hell is inferno, but here also is winter, inverno. Hell is cold. I'm sorry, if you think you're going to go to hell and, and have a nice barbecue or something, it's going to be freezing, so bring some warm clothes. Is that it's why winter. In, is that why in Scorpio you've got the star Antares, you've got Aries in the head, anti-Aries lower? Exactly. Is that the connection? Antares means opposite Aries. Yeah. Okay. But you mean uh, the, the act, with the fluid, the activation of the pineal gland or something like that? Yes. This is what we're going to do today because it's the most important thing that we can study about the science of light. Okay? So we, we'll do that now. And, um, and, um, oh, here it is. And there are many, many other constellations that correspond with organs in the body. Leo is the heart, Scorpio is the <coughs> uterus or the testes. Uh, Libra is the kidneys, we've already said that. Virgo is the intestines, the internal s intestines serving the body, digesting the food. Hence, Virgo is a sign of service, etc., etc. Let's continue. He here, are, here are the ten concentric rings as we descend from mind, from universal mind, knowing, to universal mind thinking. We are now thinkers. And we have seven conditions, seven vices which we need to turn to seven virtues as we transmute lead into gold and as we ascend the ladder of Jacob and return to unconditioned consciousness. These seven planets, these seven chakras are nothing but conditions. Our consciousness, which was unconditioned, has been conditioned. And we need to sublimate those energies, change them, change the polarity from good, evil to good. So we uh, mustn't judge anymore, just observe? Judge lest you be judged. Just watch. Yeah. 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 We fall into that trap because it's part of thinking mm -hmm. over here. We all fall into this trap. Here is the beautiful Ennead of Virgil, the greatest document ever to come out of good old Rome, before all of this <coughs> shit that Rome has produced. This hypocrisy. Here is the way that men and women used to think. It, it, this is from Book 6 of the Ennead, 730. In the beginning, spirit fed all things from within. The sky and the earth, the level waters, the shining globe of the moon, and the titan star, the sun. It was mind that set all this matter in motion, infused through all the limbs. It mingled with that great body, and from the union there sprang the families of men and of animals, the living things of the air and the strange creatures born beneath the marble surface of the earth, of the sea. The living force within them is of fire, and its seeds have their source in heaven. Remember Walter Russell said the seeds of all things are in heaven, in our Father who art in heaven. Give us our daily bread. The bread is the bread of the manna, which comes from the cerebrum. Um, anyway, you can read this yourself, okay, in time. Here are the ten concentric rings, the ten rings of the, of the Kabbalistic tree. And here we see Jesus Christ. Here we, have, here we see Jesus Christ <coughs> hiding behind the ten rings. These are the ten rings because they're based on seven levels. This is the beast in Revelation that says has seven heads and ten horns of Revelation. It's in your body. But is it uh, something to do with the ego? The, the... Yes, there are two egos. There's the ego of the cerebellum, which is the ego of the personality. And there's the id, the ego of the individuality. We need to lose the lower ego of the personality. Oh, I'm St. Ospinati, I'm a musician, and I'm a doctor. You know, I'm rich. Oh, I've got a Mercedes Benz. That's all, that's all for children who haven't learnt anything about this game that they're in. We're all equal. If you've got a Mercedes Benz, that just means you've got a Mercedes Benz. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, <laughs> or whatever, whatever you've got and you think and you believe in, that's the ego we need to lose. But we need to keep the ego of the individuality. Mm -hmm. <coughs> 
which is the higher mind, the God light. There's nothing wrong with the ego. You can't get rid of it. It's a tool. Yeah, well, the, the, there's, there's, remember that the two egos, the personalities, it's a, it's a, it's a story that we believe in. Mm -hmm. we, think, we think we're something that we're not. We are pure light. We are all knowing. <laughs> we're not, you know, a famous foot fo footballer from Ajax, you know, or <laughs> Far what's the other one in Ro Rotterdam? Farinot. you know. And, and, uh, yeah, these young men, you see, they want to be heroes. We all want to be heroes. There's different levels of heroes. You see, our hero ship should be the Jupiterian he hero ship. We'll learn about this in a minute. There's three levels. Jupiter, Neptune, Pluto. These ones are Plutonian heroes. They can't save themselves like this. Only the middle Neptunians can save themselves. And the Jupiterians save themselves and others, <coughs> which is more noble. But these heroes, they're still heroes. They're our brothers. They still do not understand. It's only a play. They take themselves seriously. <laughs> we don't take ourselves seriously. We take our work our science seriously. This is serious, not we. <clears throat> That's the big difference. They don't want this. So from Godhead, call it Big Bang, it's just magnetic light dividing. That's all it is. That's what the Big Bang is. This is why left brain academics will never understand. They're, they're talking about Big Bang and quantum physics and, and dark matter and dark energy. It's a whole crock. None of that exists. Walter Russell, 100 years ago, debunked the atomic theory. So there's no atom. <laughs> it's a wave. It's all thinking. It's, that's all debunked. All these quantum physicists, you know, they're just making money from spreading lies. When God undivided white causal light knowing all things wishes to experience he produces his son the word the logos electricity emmanuel jesus in other words fire and from fire is born all things from vibration and that's simple still light motional light and there's just two things but it's now nice to see that quantum, uh, quantum physics is also now on Oh, it is spiritual. Nice to say. Yeah. It is. Because they can't escape it. Oh. They, will, they cannot escape the spiritual causal side. You see, we've had too many people starting from over here, from the left brain, and studying the effects, you know, mm. you know trusting their, 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 their senses. Oh, it's, it's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and no, it's a, it's a poisonous snake. So you get to die because you trusted your senses. So knowing is different to thinking and sense thinking. Walter Russell said, all the left brain scientists are <laughs> sense thinkers. You know, it's called imperial reductionism. If you can prove it in the laboratory and we can see it with our eyes and we can trust it with our eyes, they, they don't stop to meditate and to know all things. The Akashic, they already know in the Akashic records. Yeah. So why do we have to do experiments and experiments mm. and kill animals and torture them? And, mm. Because they've lost the connection to this cause, their divinity. They deny divinity. They would rather be atheists, denying God, their own Godship. <laughs> Big Bang. So, magnetic light, electric light. Pre-angelic realms, angelic, spiritual, mental, astral, etheric, mineral, vegetable, animal, human. And then returning back again. And here is um, the wonderful um, Alvin Boyd Kuhn explaining why the numbers 3, 4, 7 and 12 and 40 are so pivotal in our theologies, because it comes from the ecliptic. It must come from the ecliptic. All theologies, all sciences come from that way. Everything. There's not a thing that does not live on that way. There's not a thing that that way cannot teach you. It can teach you all things, because the secret of creation is in the way. Nature sounds a seven key octave, seven and eight, always this octave, this septenary or octave. The divine mind sounds a twelve key diapason. Mind is twelve, nature, material, matter is seven. 
And here again he explains this twelve. Twelve lights would therefore be the most apt symbol of the twelve basic powers of divine intelligence. And this brings us back to the primal true designation of the twelve rays of genius in man. You see we have twelve cranial nerves. That's the Christ and his twelve apostles. And those nerves descend into the land of the Gentiles to witness and bear witness to the Gentiles to save them. Because from here, salvation for the rest of the body occurs through the nervous system and through the sublimating of the nervous system. Our nervous system is evolving according to its consciousness. You see how simple the nervous system is of animals? And they only have five chakras, two chakras, one chakra or whatever. We have seven. This will, this will multiply as our nervous system multiplies with our consciousness. We are going to 13 chakras? 360. There are many chakras back to cause. We'll see this in a minute. It's coming. <clears throat> in various other symbolic typings, they are also the 12 reapers of the golden grain, the 12 harvesters of the field of Amenta, the 12 builders, the 12 carpenters, 12 masons, 12 potters, 12 weavers of the pattern, 12 fishermen, 12 rowers of the boat with Horus, 12 sailors in the ship of Ra, the sun. They are the 12 powers of sun god intelligence. And as ancient philosophy brings out the astounding fact that sunlight is the eventual product of divine meditation, the light of the sun is the pure energy of intellect, says Proclus in one of the most illuminating sentences ever uttered. The 12 rays of the solar <laughs> logos become at last in men and gods the 12 faculties of spiritual intelligence, the evolution of which makes each man <coughs> in his aeonial career a Christ, instructing and tra training his 12 disciples within the confines of his own individuality, not personality. They are the fourfold differentiation under the symbolism of fire, air, water, and earth. Each of which, of each of the two, three kings or kingly powers of divine intellect into which primordial unity of mind breaks up its necessary fragmentation as it descends into matter. See, mind over matter. As mind imprints its thinking into matter and creates material forms, it descends just like rain. Rain is pure in the clouds and then it falls and it creates lakes and rivers and oceans and then it goes back up. And like the tree trunk, he explains here, the tree trunk has branches and they all break up branch and, and, and they come into the leaves. But there's one trunk, one mind. And we are the branches, and the trunk is what unites us. See, if we believe in our personalities, well, we've got a doctor here, and a scientist, and an alchemist, and a hero, and a footballer, and we all believe, and we've got our separate colours for our football teams. If we're going to go doing that, we will never see the unity. We will never see the trunk. You see, he says here, <coughs> as water falling from the height breaks up into fragments owing to the resistance of the air, and the bloodstream divides from the heart. Uh, the heart again is one, but the, uh, the arteries, arteries bringing the blood are many. Mm. Ah, is that what's happening? I think I'm doing something wrong here, guys. <clears throat> um, my, uh, so, simply said. There's a pointer, if you press on top. Oh, is there? And where is that? In the middle on top. Gotcha. Ah. Oh. <laughs> in reduction to simplest form, all this means that as in physical matter and its manifestation on earth, there are four basic differentiations of expression as fire, air, water and earth. So in mind, there are four analogous sub-differentiations. Again, in soul, 
the same four. And again in spirit, the same four. Mind, soul and spirit have their four. They all have their four. This is Alvin Boyd Kuhn in the book, Who is this King of Glory? In which he shows who the King Jesus Christ really is. It's light. So the 12 great qualities that are to divinize us are the spirit's fire, air, water and earth, the soul's fire, air, water and earth, and the mind's fire, air, water and earth, all combined in one grand synthesis, the Christ consciousness. And here are the bodies. Here is the causal body, and here is the physical body. And we have the mental, etheric, etc. Notice the chakras corresponding to this. Notice in the Hindu system how many chakras there are. There's your chakra system. On the top we have Satyaloka. Satyaloka is the home of pure bliss. Here, Maharaloka, that's where soulmates unite to become immortal. Here, we are not immortal. We have the seeds of immortality. But we must ascend the Sahasrara, the Kronos Chakra. Once we ascend, we go into these invisible area here. And here is the fourth chakra above the head, is where Thomas H. Burgoyne says that our other half of our missing soul unites and we enter into bliss, eternal bliss from there and go to our true home, Satyaloka. Here is the egg in the ovary. That's the start of the journey. Here we begin our journey in incarnation. This is the baptism of earth. We are born in a womb. We die in a tomb. Plato said we come from Soma, body, and we, we go to Sema, tomb. We are all baptized in death. This is death. This is not life. Life is out of bodies. Hence, it's the baptism of earth. So, we get baptized with... Go to church and get baptized with... Water. Water is the solvent, the cleanser. It cleans earth. You can wash things with water. Yeah? Try washing your car with bananas. <laughs> doesn't work. Water cleans. Then you have air. <clears throat> air is spiritus in Latin. You see, John the Baptist says, I baptize you with water, but the one coming will baptize with fire. spirit and water. No. Nope. And fire. 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 Because air and fire are above <clears throat> earth and water. This is the baptism of the tomb. Death. But, notice the golden colour of the egg. This is the cosmic egg. We begin our journey here. We come from nothing, and we have an apparent body now. You see, but this egg is invisible to your eye. You can't see it. It's still spirit at this stage. It is still not physical. You see the difference between spirit and matter? It's very vague. It's the same thing. There's no differentiation in the end. It is all oneness. We just use that to, to differentiate between things that appear solid and things that, that appear invisible. Our senses delude us. Here is the sine wave, guys. Again, we saw that the ecliptic, the sun, is always right ascending on that. And he's giving us good, and then he's giving us evil. So-called. Here it is simply, in its simple form. There you see 23 and a half degrees, the Tropic of Cancer. You see? Here is the key again. Here they put Aries on this side. This is wrong. They put West there. That should be East. It's, it's, you know, they made a big mistake here. But the point is, you see the Tropic of Cancer. You see the Tropic of Capricorn. Capricorn is the builder because he has to climb up. He has to build. It's got to build the whole wheel. And you see, this is, and then Libra is over here, the scales of balance, balancing the sine wave. And so you see the six glorious summer signs and the six infernal, invernal winter signs. Infer means below. 
here are the Egyptians depicting the same thing. Am I in the way? No? Just let me know, please. Yeah. Here is the Chicana. You remember the eight-spoke wheel? The Chicana? That's, this is the Chicana from Ecuador. I'm showing this to everybody. I got this at the Temple of the Sun, at La Mitad del Mundo, the center on the equator of the earth in Quito. That is a jade Chicana. That's their cross. In Ireland, they have the Celtic cross. In India, they have the Svastika, Shiva's cross. Svas is Shiva. Shiva is the destroyer. But it's the cross. It's the symbol of the wave. They always taught this. They always taught the wave. And that's why they had millions of different crosses to depict the wave, to teach us in the days which we will forget this science, to remember the cross. It's on every temple, every church, cross, cross, everywhere is the symbol of the wave, to bring us back to the wave universe. Here it is. You see, the symbol is everywhere. There it is, the royal arch, always from Aries to Libra. And here you see... The Freemasons, they have, yesterday, um, my friend in, um, two days ago in Ireland, he said, when the, um, the Orange Lodge in Northern Ireland, uh, the pedophiles, when they march in the streets of Ireland to uh, rub in the nose of the Irish, the true Irish people, that they have controlled that country for about 900 years, the psychopathic pimps from England, from the Crown, um, they, they have these letters, C.F., and he asked me, what does the CHF mean? And I said, charity, hope and faith. You see, they talk about charity, hope and faith, but they are psychopathic vampires doing exactly the opposite. So never listen to them what they say. Oh, the Catholic Church is always talking about charity and love. <laughs> and yet it's stealing all the property of every individual who has ever lived and hoarding it for what? So that they can be rich. Shouldn't you just translate it as a privileges, benefits, and what's the other one? Uh, services. Yeah. Yeah. We'll give you privileges, services, and benefits. Register here and lose all your rights. Mm -hmm. Folks, it's time to be self-determined and know your rights. And never let any of these monkeys or the agents of the pimps disturb your peace. We it's time to uh, stand up, folks. We've got OPPT now. Sure. Yeah, OPPT. That's, <laughs> kicking, that's kicking some butt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah kicking some culitos. <laughs> That's for you Latinos. <laughs> Look after everybody here. <laughs> but notice here, you go from Capricorn, the, the goats, to Aries, the sheep, and you see the seven stars of the Pleiades. It's the pineal gland. So you go from Earth, Capricorn Earth, to fire, Aries, in the head. Head is heaven. And you go to the seven stars of the Pleiades, which is the pineal mm -hmm. gland. And this is the story we're now going to begin. How do we do this? This, yeah. is, this is how we do this story, friend. There's the key. There it is. It's all there. It's all the same symbolism. It's all about the wave. There's the wave. It's in the body. Here, remember the cosmic egg? This is the embryo, folks. See the, see the spine? This is the, the spine now. The cerebrospinal system is the first system fully developed. Here you see the feet touching the back of the head. Remember Jacob? Jacob is Bacchus. Bacchus is the sun. You know what Jacob means? Heel catcher. Because Israel, you see Jacob got his name changed to Israel, means heel catcher. Because the heel catcher is this. The head always is... The feet of Pisces always touch the back of the head. So we're going to start with this model as the embryo teaches us. The embryo already teaches us that the feet touch the back of the head and we do a circle. Taurian field, isn't it? Sorry? It's a taurian. Yeah. yeah, Taurus no. field, it's the sine wave, it's spiral, it's all of that. And this is, this is the great um, George Carey who is showing the microcosmic um, biochemistry that is in all sacred scriptures. If you miss it, you're not looking, because it's sticking out like dog's genitalia. <laughs> Can't miss it. 
Here we have, and, and here, see, we have followed. Here is the head. This is Jacob, the heel catcher. It's also Adam. Oh, this is good. It's oh, like driving a limousine, yeah? It's so beautiful when you know the science. When you know the ecliptic and the wave and this science that they, the ancients bequeathed to us, which we, in our ignorance, <coughs> call evil. Here is the ascendant. Here is the descendant. Here is the meridian. Zosimov, the 4th century Greek famous astrologer, astro uh, philosopher, said, Ascendant, descendant, meridian is Adam. Adam Kadmon. Adam Kadmon <coughs> is Jacob, the heel catcher, is Abraham, is Jesus, Moses. Whatever name you want to give it, it's the Demiurge, the second creator, because the first one has no name. That's God, the cause of all things. And that's we. It's we that is doing this. Hence, Adam is Jacob, the heel catcher. Here are the 12 Schusler inorganic cell salts which correspond to each of the signs. Each one of us requires three of those salts. They are the salts that we did not develop outside of the womb of our mothers. In the womb of our mothers, we develop nine of them. So me being Aryan, I need the salt of Aries, Taurus and Gemini because I, I was... Conceived on the 7th of Cancer, uh, uh, sorry, 7th of July, and I spent nine mothers in my mother's womb, and I was born right here on the 24th of March, three days after the equinox. So I am deficient in potassium phosphate, sodium sulfate, and potassium chloride. Mm. So I need these to complete the Philosopher's Stone. What's that then? Um, iron phosphate. In the Netherlands, this is uh, yeah, all the salts. Schusler salts. Yeah. Yeah. The 12 inorganic yeah. Schusler salts. And George <laughs> Carey, George Carey, the biochemist, from this, and all of this presentation is based on George Carey's work on top of Schusler's work, which he based on Paracelsus and Hippocrates. Mm -hmm. Schusler is not original. Neither is George Carey. Nothing is original. And these 12 salts are not original. Well, they're original. But they're not original by any name. You know, no one said, Schusler didn't say, Oh, hmm, let me think about this. I'll make 12 salts. No. The universe. When you're cremated, Sorry? When you're cremated, if you were to study the ash, you will find those 12 salts again. Yeah. That's why we know they form a slide. Yes, for sure. I can give you... These are all my graphs. They're, no one owns them. If you email me... Because you came to the presentation, yeah, but, <coughs> I will give them to you. You see it in the, if you go to Schusler salts or something like that, then it's different. Sometimes it's different the information. Oh, so really? Yeah. Yeah. So, but but I think this is correct. Ah, yes, you, yeah, it's yeah. different. Um, the the it, what salt they ascribe to which um, yeah. which sign of the zodiac? Yeah. yeah. Look, I'm not saying, um, and neither is, I don't think George Carey really either is 100% sure and saying these are the, the, the um, potassium phosphate is definitely the salt of Aries. There's, there's, there's always a little bit of crossover. I mean, I, I, in my personal view, um, iron phosphate, see, I would put iron phosphate also in Aries because Aries is ruled by iron Mars. So... You know, you've got to be a little bit flexible with this. In my opinion, it would be best to take the 12 salts because the body is a, a temple of 12. There's 12 throughout the whole body. We see, we see how perfectly the 12 signs are in the body, right? Have a look at your head. Aries. The 12 signs are in your head. Aries is here. Taurus is here. These are Gemini. Air. Nostrils. Cancer is the crab. Leo is the chin. The heart, Virgo, is in here. Virgo is ruled by Mercury. In here you have air and cerebrospinal fluids. 
and it's through the virgin that we go back to head to heaven so we must go we the the virgin in the neck is the intercessor to christ libra the two olives scorpio sagittarius capricorn and aquarius is the water bearer is the fontanelle the little hole you have here that sucks in all the positive energy and then pisces is here you see it's in your head it's in your hand aries um these are the cardinal signs aries uh no sorry aries cancer you see the the, the um there's 12 bones in those four fingers right aries cancer libra capricorn and then the middle bones are the fixed signs and the bottom bones are the mutable signs it's in everything <coughs> yeah. I have actually been thinking about that, about that, because I've taken, I've been taking three of them for uh, six months now, and it's working actually. But I've been thinking, uh, what if, um, if I take my three uh, salts for six months and then continue taking uh, twelve? I would take, in that case, I would take the twelve, and on top of that, just add the three that you need. If you really want your three, take your three, but also supplement with the 12. And how would I uh, add them? Because they're... They make them in one pill. They put all 12 in one. It's called bioplasma. Yes, but you say take uh, 12 of them, mm -hmm. yes, in one pill, and then add my three. Yeah. So how would I add them? Huh. Like, Just how many... eat them. You can <laughs> eat as many as you many? like. You can't they're overdose doses. on minerals. No. You just just oh, take them, <laughs> like you oh, eat food. Yes, you can right. just uh, you can have a whole bottle. Just because <laughs> 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 whatever your body doesn't need, it it will get rid of. Yeah, minerals can't kill you. How can you overdose on minerals? Yeah, minerals is all the body needs. By the way, you don't need vitamins, enzymes, and proteins. That is a crock of shit invented by idiots. That that stuff doesn't exist. It's all minerals. Electric force, minerals, everything is electric, so all we need is electric. If, you're bo if everything is electric, all you need to do is consume electricity, electric force, and that's minerals. Protein doesn't even exist. I have a question about the uh, um, emoto, the water, uh, what you want to Should we have the last half hour for questions? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah please. Yes. Yeah, let's, let's get going, mate, because I really want to... Thanks, sister. Oh. <laughs> Lovely. Because <laughs> we've got some great stuff to get through. You're going to love it. There's the 12 systems, guys. There's the 12 systems. There's the 12 meridians. My wife is studying this right now. She's doing um, acupuncture and she's got all the charts of every meridian. And there are 12. There they are. The terminals in the head, they're in the feet, they're in the ear, they're everywhere. As above, so below, all reproduced in every organ of your body. There are the 24 hours of the day and all the 12 systems that are activated during the day, according to Chinese science. Now, here we commence our little story. The sacred oil that comes from the claustrum is otherwise called holy this, the claustrum is called the Holy Claustrum, or the Santa Claustrum, or if you want to shorten it even more, Santa Claus. <laughs> Santa Claus comes down the chimney and gives presents, and then what do we do with those presents? <laughs> in Greek, in, in um, Sante's anatomy, it's called chrism. In Greek, it's called Christos, the oil. The good oil. Christ is oil. Bread, the bread of life, the manna from heaven, heaved up in the head. Our Father in the heavens, give us our daily bread. Because when this oil finishes, you die. The cause of death is no more oil is being produced in the classroom. No more gifts. It's the only reason. That's what causes death, <coughs> ultimately. And that's because we are squandering and burning this with overeating, over sex, over drinking, over everything that is acidic, opposite of alkalinity. Alkalinity keeps the oil pure. The body that is moderate, the body that is kept 
clean and calm, the philosopher's life, it will raise, it will raise the oil. It's called the fish because your, your body fluids smell like fish. Tastes like salt. It's called the salt. Salt is salvation, salubrious, health, saliva, salary. The Romans paid in salt. Salute. How do you say health in Spanish? Salud. How do you say hello in Spanish? Saludos. No, no, but I mean, what's... Saludos. Saludos. Hola is good, thank you. Hola. Hola comes from the Greek word, hello, salt. That's the Greek word. Halo, hello, hail. So when you hail, when you salute, in Italian I say, salve, buongiorno, salve. Why am I giving people salt in the morning when I say hello? Buongiorno, salve. Salt. Saluti. Salud. Hello. Hail. Hitler. <laughs> it's all salt. When you go, when the Jehovah's Witnesses go to a hall, which is halos, they go for salvation. And in Spanish, it's a salon. El salon del reino de Jehová. Salva but you won't get saved there. The Sorry? Salva <laughs> means save yourself in salt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's because it's the salt that comes from the se <coughs> yeah. cerebrum, which is wax. Ceres is the goddess of cereals. It's the cereals. We, we, in April, every year in Rome, April 15th, in Aries, they celebrated cerealia, the cereals, that start here, in the cerebrum, cerebrum. Every year the blossom is here. Every year the harvest is in Bethlehem, Virgo. It's Virgo now. You look around Holland, do you see any harvesting happening? Do you see the wheat being harvested? Mm -hmm. There's wheat here, yeah? You see the piles of wheat? They're harvesting now in Virgo. Virgo, she holds the wheat because she says, when the sun comes through my sign, you can have wheat. So we see how the sun gives us bread and wine in September. And that's why, as Johan showed, Jesus here, he's got six apostles to his left, six to his right, and he's saying, eat bread and wine. I give you this. Jesus turns water into wine. This is the water. And this is the wine season. Every year we get wine. Wine is the finish of the good work of the son Bacchus, the god of wine. Or the god of alcohol. Al is El, or Allah, or Elohim, the sun. You can't hide from it. Alcohol, wine, whatever you want to call it. There's one god, the god of light. He produces all these things. And bread also. Bread is a great symbol because you have to... You have to water the wheat, you have to cultivate it, fertilise it, <coughs> weed it. And then, you, then the, the virgins go out in September to pick the, the harvest up, then you put it into the grains. You see here in Holland you have hundreds of, and thousands of windmills because they used to do what? They used to grind the wheat. You see? So then you grind the wheat, then you mix it with egg and flour, and then you put it in the oven, then you take it out of the oven, and finally you eat bread. Thank you to the sun. And that's why Jesus always puts his table out, the sun, and says, eat bread and wine. And what else is the other symbol? Oil. Fish. Oil, bread, and wine. The three. Christos is oil, and the bread and wine is the fitting symbols of the sun's good work. Because they are perfected symbols. It takes a long time to get a glass of wine. It takes a long time to get some bread. You don't just go around and pick bread. Oh, there's, there's a bread plant, a bread tree. <laughs> you know, you, it's not the same. You see, an apple, that's different. We just wait, you don't, you don't do any work, and then you eat the apple. But to make bread and wine, you have to toil and sweat like the sun toils and sweats. It's hard work, it's cultivated goods. But it's also dead, because the wine and the bread are not alive anymore. That's, is, that, is that something to do with where it is on the zodiac wine as well? Mm -hmm. After the bread, it's dark. Not really. Right. Not really. Um, yeah, yeah, everything has light in it. Everything. You know, I was thinking before when Johann said, and he said correctly too, that the sun 
is the positive centre of the solar system and it has its own light and then the other ones are reflectors of light. When you think about that, yeah, it's true in astrology. But in reality, it's not true because everything has light. Jupiter has its own light. The moon has her own light, even though she's a reflector of the light. Everything has light. It's all light. It's just different kind of light. There are different kinds, and we have to understand this. We have to understand the archetypes. Mars light is very different to Jupiterian light. It's very different. It's a different colour, different vibration. They each have their signature vibration. But anyway, these are the words. Um, soma. Soma juice in the, in the uh, um, Hindu system. And so, in the claustrum here, when the oil descends into the third ventricle, uh, the third heaven, it gets differentiated. Um, <clears throat> so, it gets differentiated. The pineal gland produces a positive fluid. The pituitary body produces a negative fluid. And the, pi the positive fluid goes down the pingala, red, all the way down to the sacrum here. This is the sacrum. And the pituitary body sends the negative fluid down the ida. And this is the shushumna in the middle. So you have the two kundalini serpents. And the oil is differentiated here in the, in the third ventricle. And it comes to the sacrum. This is where Scorpio is. Now, the sacrum, this, you'll find this information in 10 natural treatments you haven't heard of until now. William Wong. The sacrum forms the bottom pump for the cerebrospinal fluid respiration. The sphenoid and occipital bones at the floor of the brain form the top of the pump. When you breathe, these cranial bones teeter-totter against each other at their meeting point in the centre bottom of the skull. This action pumps brain fluid around the brain case and down the spinal canal. Again, when you breathe, the sacrum rocks minutely, front and back, pumping the fluid back up. So, every month, when the moon is transiting your sun sign, yeah, when it's transiting your sun sign, you all know your sun sign? I'm Aries. Johan, Scorpio. Sister? Uh, Leo. Leo. Aquarius. Aquarius. Gemini. 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 Okay, so when... When the moon is in Gemini, every month she goes through every sign. 29 days, she goes right through the 12 signs. And she spends two and a half days in each sign. When she's in your sun sign, she births a psychophysical germ in your solar plexus. Here. has 12 nerves. Again, 12. That's why it's a solar plexus. From the sacrum here, and in here, this is Virgo, Bethlehem, where baby Jesus is born. This seed is called Jesus, the child of Joseph and Mary. Joseph is the pineal gland, Mary is the pituitary gland. And, and so, if we look after that seed that is very tender, it eventually will ascend. And it will, it will, <coughs> it will activate each chakra as it returns back to head heaven. And you see, this is called a secretion. The, the oil is a secretion. <coughs> Notice the word secret. And here is the sacrum. It's, it's the sacred secret that the Apostle Paul was talking about in Colossians chapter 1, 26 and 27. This sacred mystery that was... The, uh, sorry. This sacred secret. That's how the Jehovah's Witness Bible calls it, by the way. <laughs> this sacred secret that was not known to the ancients, which it was, which I'm going to reveal to you today, is the secret of the Christ within. Not without. The Christ in you. And that's this Christ. You see, there are 33 bones along here. And when you get to the last one, and you cross the medulla oblongata here in the bottom, in the, at the bottom of the head, and here are the 12 cranial nerves. When you get to the 33rd bone where the Christ is crucified, he gets crucified at this cross here. See, this is the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve 
is the nerve that goes through your body. It's vagrant. It just wanders around through the body, <laughs> feeding the heart, the liver, the spleen, the kidneys, all the vital organs. And then it returns all the fluid back to the cerebrum. Aries, the ram, the lamb of God. The lamb of God. In the book of Revelation, it mentions the lamb of God 29 times. What have sheep got to do with salvation? And the most holiest of books, every chapter, there's only 22 chapters, 22 again, Revelation, because it's the 22 paths of the Kabbalistic tree. When you look properly, you will see it. And what's the Lamb of God got to do with all of this? Well, we shall see. Here is the Lamb of God, the cerebrum, two hemispheres. And this corpus colossum, that's the Red Sea, where we go from the sinister brain, sinister is sin, sinners are here. People who insist that their cleverness is above all knowing. Oh, my opinions. I'm going to repeat them. They're all wrong, and I'm going to keep them till I go to my grave. Oh, I'm going to be a Catholic till I die. I will die a Catholic, an ignoramus, a supporter of pedophilia. <laughs> and that's what this brain does. It's the sinister brain. And we have to cross the corpus colossum to get into the holy land, in the east, in the right. Because right is right. Left is not right. It's sin. And so the vagus nerve, which is also called the uh, pneumogastric nerve because it, it feeds the stomach and the lungs, pneumogastric. Once the oil crosses here, it then enters into the third ventricle. It touches the optic thalamus, the Lamb of God, Orion. Lamb is also lamp. Because it's the lamp that sees, the eye, the simple eye. Keep your eye simple and your whole body will be illuminated. Because when the oil returns and gets crucified here, Joseph and Mary, the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, very, very happy. The oil then goes into the third ventricle, which is called the cave of Brahma, where Brahma is dead for three days, or Jesus is laid in a tomb for three days. Then activation happens. The pineal gland is touched with this oil, the pineal gland already produces melatonin and dimethyltryptamine. It commences to produce something which is called the blood of the Christ. This is Christ turning water into wine. This is what in occult science is called the good wine. Finally, we have wine, not water, in our blood. And this blood of the Christ cleans the blood, purifies the blood, administers the 12 salts that we need, and we can live virtually forever if we do this process. This is why all your hermits live to 300 years, 400 years. I've got evidence in many presentations of mine of people living 600 years, 300 years, celebrating their 400th birthday. Oh, you won't hear it in the Rothschilds media that we get, but it, but it is a fact. And here we are dying at 60 and some 70 and 80. Oh, we died 80, had a nice long life. Rubbish. <laughs> That's a short life because that person squandered their oil. They used up all their good oil. How do you nur nurture the oil? By returning the oil back. Nurture the oil. So like moderate life. Moderate life. Mm. Not over drinking. See all these pubs around Amsterdam? You see these young people with beer glass like this? <laughs> <laughs> That's killing the oil. Alcohol is poison. It's toxic. It's in moderation it's okay. It can be medicinal originally. Mm. Wine can be good for the digestion, little wine, you know, many, aperitive, many um, of the uh, aperitive drinks, good for the, the, but this drinking culture, this is absolutely deliberate. Oh yes, some, some entheogens, some holy plants, they are evil and you can go to jail for that, but you can't go to jail, you know, for getting caught drinking alcohol, they love that. Only if you're drunk, of course, this is their, this is their, their system, it, it's twisted. But this culture, nonetheless, is killing our children. Alcohol is deadly, deadly, deadly dangerous. I've never had any tolerance for alcohol. I've probably been drunk five times in my life, and it made me sick for a week. And I swore that I'd never do it again. Somehow, I... <laughs> but you know, I've never had any tolerance for it. Or alcoholics, uh, you know, or alcoholism. I just can't stand that melted face of a drunk. You can tell their brain is just shut off and they're just an idiot, you know? And, it, and I can see the damage and the hurt that it's doing. It's just, 
It's terrible. Anyway, that's my thing, you know. And marijuana, I'm not, I'm not, Santos. Marijuana, you have to be very careful because a lot of it has been hybridised. If you if you have pure marijuana, you know, I don't, you know, that's it's also an entheogen, but it's artificial. Mm -hmm. All entheogens, and entheogens were administered in all of the mystery schools. All of them. Today they give you a bit of wheat called the Eucharist, so you can have communion with God. How can you have communion with God with a bit of wheat? Mm -hmm. Originally that was the Amanita muscaria mushroom which gives you Christ consciousness, which takes you out of your body so you can see your body and you can say, yes, I am mind, and that is the body, and you can have communion with God. But it's artificial. We should be able to do that with meditation, and we are required to. What about uh, Jesus being the mushroom? Yes, he is. <coughs> Jesus is, as I said, in, in botanical speak, it's the mushroom. In biochemistry, it's the chrism. In astrotheology, it's the sun. In astrology, it's the sun. In theology, it's Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Christ. You've got to speak the different languages. But you're correct. Of course it is. You see? There it is. There's the tree that God planted in the Garden of Eden. And here is the fornix. The fornix. Right in the in the centre of the hand, uh, of the brain, here are the posterior, the post the anterior pillars of the fornix. These are the pillars of Hercules. This is where we need to bring the oil. There's the ram. It's not very hard to see, is it? The cerebrum, Aries. You can just see it's the shape of the the bulls, the the, the horns of the ram. And there are the pillars. The two pillars, we have to bring the oil through there. And when the oil finally gets through there, here are the, the pillars. These are the pillars of Hercules. This is Jesus returning back to heaven, resurrecting. Because the oil, once it gets into the third ventricle, it stays dead for three days in the tomb. Then the stone is removed, an electrical impulse is sent through those two pillars, and it goes through into the right side of the brain, as it says, East or the right means the same thing, and then it, it activates all the dormant brain cells. In our cerebrum, we have dormant brain cells sleeping. That's why you see all these people sleeping. We call them sleepers, don't we? And Jesus says, In the days of the end, people will be eating and drinking, buying and selling, until the flood came and swept them all away. The flood is the flood of consciousness. It always is. There's two kinds of destruction, water and fire, in the scriptures. The fire is Promethean fire. The fire of consciousness. And it comes and it destroys all the sleeping ones. Hence, very dangerous to be sleeping. And there is Hercules. And he and there's the pillars. They're in your head. That's what it's telling you. God, generation, geometry, Gaia, Grail, the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is that. It's the third ventricle. In the Bible. 1 Kings 6, 8, the door for the middle chamber, pineal gland, was in the right side of the house, right hemisphere of the brain. And they went up, winding stairs into the middle chamber, and out of the middle into the third. You see, the Apostle Paul said, I went to the third heaven. And Jacob, he laid his, his head on the stone of scone, that's the sacrum, down here. And he saw a ladder going up to heaven and angels descending and ascending. And then he went up the ladder and he saw God face to face and survived and said, I've seen God face to face and I live and I call this place Perneal, Pineal, the Pineal Gland. It's here. There's the Pineal Gland. I think that's it there, isn't it? Anyway, that's the third ventricle. <coughs> Remember I said in the head are the 12 signs of the zodiac. We said um, Aries is here, Taurus is the eyes, Gemini the nostrils, Cancer, Leo, Virgo is in here. And then we said that Libra was the two olives here. These are the two olives. Olive, olive. Remember Jesus before he died, before he was crucified, he was on the Mount of Olives. That's the Mount of Olives. This is the mountain. Up. Mountains are high. And here we have two pyramids. Pyramid, 
pyramid. There is the ponds. Ponds is bridge. It's the bridge to heaven. Head. And we need to get there from the cerebellum to the cerebrum. And in Egypt, that's why the pyramids are here. Because the pyramids are there at the delta. That's the delta. It's in your head. And Egypt is exactly the same as the skies. These are all the philosophers who said that the, that the soul is in the head, in the cerebrum. Plato held that the vital principle was in the brain and that the brain and spinal cord were coordinators of vital force, while Strato placed it in the forefront part of the brain between the eyebrows. Hippocrates placed the consciousness of the soul in the brain. Heriophilus, Calamus scriptorius, the chief seat of the soul. Erasistratus, the soul in the cerebellum, or the little brain. Gallum, the fourth ventricle of the brain, is the home of the soul. Hippolytus, the spirit advances toward the pineal gland. And cerebellum, it's all there. St. Augustine, middle ventricle. The Arabian philosophers, the brain is the seat of the soul. Dr. Hollander, the reason why the ancient philosophers from whom the Arabs adopted this localization placed the faculties in <coughs> certain cells, meaning cavities or ventricles, probably was to give more room for the nevma, the gaseous substance, to expand. Second ventricle. Third ventricle was the seat <coughs> of understanding, and the fourth was sacred to memory. It's all the River Jordan in the head. Again, there's some more philosophers. Um, the two ventricles. The right and left lateral ventricles which communicate with one another and are continuous with the third ventricle. See that word foramen? That means the hole of amen. You know the hole at the bottom of your cranium where the spinal cord goes in? That's called the hole of Amun, foro di Amun. And you have hundreds of foramens in your body. Amun is light, the sun, the god of light. In Jesus' name, Amun. And we, our body is full of Amuns, foramens. <coughs> These are all of the great people, the soul, the center of the brain. Roger Bacon, Ludovico Vives. The brain. And look at the word brain. Bra. Remember? Whoops. Abram. Brain. Anyway, Swedenborg, what does he say? Ah, again. Corpora striata. He agrees with the other one. The centrum of Ali. The third ventricle, that's the third heaven. That's the seat of the soul together with the heart. There's the ram. Cerebram, cerebellum. You got some nice water there, young hun? <laughs> Any good water? Thanks, brother. Thank you. I've got a Scorpio brother too, you know. What was your birthday? I'm also the timekeeper. You are too. He's, he's the 8th of uh, November, right in the middle of Scorpio. There's Ra. You see what babies do? They put their tongue by, by nature, by birth. They put their tongue up to the palate. And we forget to do this. Doing this connects a circuit in your body which raises the oil. If you want to raise the oil when you're walking, when you're not talking, keep your tongue up and walk with your fingers. Make connections everywhere. Connect here. Connect your fingers when you're walking. And walk on dirt. Walk barefoot on dirt. We walk too much with shoes and we stop the connection. You remember, Aquarius is pouring energy in the fontanelle and we are blocking it. We have to create a circuit so that the energy can flow and be healed. <coughs> Helios is the sun, the healer. But if we don't walk with our heels on the dirt, not grass, dirt, or the beach, sand is the best. But if we walk on dirt, you want me to finish? So we can do question and answers. We'll get, we'll, I'll be finishing in two minutes, trust me. And here are all the scriptures that talk about the tongue. 
Psalm 136, if I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Jerusalem is here. Mount Sion is here. Mount Meru, Mount Shambhala, whatever you want to call it. It's all here. Everything is within. Man is the measure of the universe. There's nothing out there that's not in you. Nothing. Forget about it. It will never happen. Here is God, the cerebrum, reaching out to the cerebellum, saying, if you want to come to head to heaven, you need to make another step, brother, to join me. There it is. Michelangelo knew. There's the ponds. There's the optic... optic. Is that chiasm or chiasm? I forget. Um, these are all the medulla, vertebra. This is... Um, the pituitary stalk. It's all there. They knew what they were doing. <clears throat> Here's all the chakras. When you add the petals, 4, 6, 10, 12, 16, 96, you get 144. When you multiply it by the top crown chakra, 1,000, you get 144,000. Revelation 14, 1. And look, and I saw the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, Aries of the Lamb, standing upon Mount Zion, and 144,000. Singing the song of the Christ. Because we are all of the 144,000. If we return like the prodigal son back to his father's kingdom. These ones have done it. Here's the great Owen Watts. Jesus Christ knew he was God. So wake up and find out eventually who you really are. In our culture, of course, they'll say you're crazy and you're blasphemous. And they'll either put you in jail or in a nut house. However, if you wake up in India and tell your friends and relatives, my goodness... I've just discovered that I am God. They'll laugh and say, oh, congratulations, at last you found out. <laughs> because they haven't had the, uh, the pimpocracy that we have had, that has destroyed this. Oh, they've, had their, they've got their caste system, which is also being manipulated. The true, true caste system which exists in the universe. It's still a caste system. There's no doubt about that. But it's not for the Brahmins to to trample on the sudras because they're the lower caste. It's for them to teach them. <laughs> there we go. The corona, the crown. Same thing. The crown of thorns. The sun has it. Jesus has it. <laughs> it's just art. And I, the vegetarian great, great ones of old, this is just an encouragement for us to, um, you know, progress in our habits of eating because eating more and more solid things like animals can only produce acid and anim, um, animal flesh can only produce acid in the body it cannot produce any alkalinity it is contrary to human nature it's poisonous toxic and acidic and you will not uh, you know i mean i'm sorry for all the meat eaters but um you know it that's one step that has to be taken first step is to get off meat and stop killing animals and um, the torture of creatures who have their own free will, they have a fully developed nervous system, blood in their veins, and if you ask them, if you can speak their language, would you like to die and end up in my tummy as putrid, um, stay in my tummy for seven days, which the body should only eliminate all foods after 24 hours, because after that it's pure toxic. All meats stay in there for seven days, putrefy, never digest, and you can't get any iron or protein out of it anyway because the isotope of iron is 47. And you can make buildings with it, but the one that humans need is 46. And you won't find it in meat, period. So it's all lies. We're at the end of the presentation, folks. Here is Christ Jesus. Here is the prodigal son. Here is Ulysses. Here is every hero that has tied himself to the mast, plugged his ears with wax and said... Whatever commerce and bullshit that's going on in the world, I'm going to return to Penelope. Penelope is the high heaven in the head. And when we return to the higher mind, we are restored back to our kingdom. He was wandering around for ten years. Ten years is just a, a symbolical number of the cycle of necessity that we are on. We are all on this cycle. We are all transmigrating. Our souls are returning to unconditioned light, and hence the sirens will be there to tempt us. Here are the priests and the, and the pedophiles and the monarchists 
and the people who make money and all the idiots outside of you trying to tell you, like all the enemies of Pinocchio. Pinocchio wanted to be not a marionette, he wanted to be a real boy. But everywhere he went, there was someone to deceive him. And he followed. And then he ended up being caught, swallowed by a whale, just like Jonah, just like all the heroes. And then when he was vomited out of the whale, out of the vomit of this earth, then he says, I'm going back. Nothing's going to stop me. Nothing stopped Ulysses, and nothing shall stop us on our path. So thank you for your lovely attention. I knew I'd get a warm welcome in, um, in Holland. I knew that. We have about 15 minutes for some questions, of course. Some already asked some questions.